Hi guys! In today's video I'll be drawing this dog's nose using pastel pencils onto pastel matte paper. I use a mixture of the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils, Stabilo Carbothello and the Caran d'Ache Pastel Pencils. You don't need all of these brands in order to complete a study like this, but these are just the ones that I have, so they're the ones that I use to create this dog's nose, but you can use literally whatever you want to. My number one tip for pastel drawings is to use a good paper. Most cheaper pastel papers have a lot of texture and it can be very difficult to get a nice smooth result with. The paper I would recommend to anyone using any type of pastels is pastel matte paper. It's quite pricey but it's 100% worth the money. If I used any other pastel paper I would never achieve results like this. If there are other pastel papers that you enjoy using then that's great but personally pastel matte's the paper that I always choose to use. I've sped this video up a little bit just so that the video doesn't go on forever but I've kept it relatively slow so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. I'm starting off with a very light pinky colour which I'm using as sort of a mid-tone value for the main part of the nose. After that I'm using a darker browny pink shade to shade in some of the darker areas on the tip of the nose. Then I go in with an even paler pink to pick out the lighter areas. With pastels, I always start off by roughly shading in the dark tones, mid tones and the lightest tones. They don't have to be positioned down really precisely as I always blend out my first couple of pastel layers anyway. The great thing about pastels on pastel matte paper is that you can put layer upon layer of pastel onto the paper. Obviously there is a limit as to how much you can add, but you can add lots and lots of layers before you get to that point. So usually I just add a rough base layer and blend that out and then I add more of the same tones on top to add richness then I blend that layer out. Then finally I add the details on top. This does depend on what subject I'm drawing as sometimes I want a smoother result than others but most of the, this nose looks pretty smooth but then at the end I do add some texture on top when I get to the final layers. Then here I am adding some brown pastel onto the shadowed areas, so right at the top of the nose where the nose attaches to the face, around the nostrils and on the line down the centre of the nose. I just sort of roughly add the shadows in before blending, then I'll deepen up the shadows even more later on. To blend out the pastel layers I use these white sticks which are called blending stumps. They're basically sticks made out of soft rolled up paper. These are super cheap to buy and they are one of my essential pastel supplies. Even though once you've used a blending stump, some of the pastel pigment stays on the tip of it, I still reuse them again and again for my other pastel pieces. What I do is I get a scrap cut off bit of pastel matte paper and I rub the used blending stump onto the pastel matte over and over until barely any of the pastel pigment comes off anymore. This just prevents the pastel colours from getting onto like from my previous drawing and then getting deposited onto my new drawing. I also use blending stumps for my graphite drawings but I don't use the exact same blending stumps for both the pastel and the graphite pieces because graphite if you put it onto pastels it can make the pastel colours look very dull if they're accidentally mixed together. I don't like using black on its own very much but for the darkest areas of the nostrils I did just go in with a black pastel. I add some greys on top later on, but the nostrils are extremely black in my reference photo. It's so important to make sure you get all the darkest areas dark enough, as that's what creates depth and realism in your artwork. I keep going back in with the lightest pink pastel as well to keep lightening up the lightest areas, as when I blend the layers out with the blending stump, sometimes the colours mix together a little bit, and the dark areas need redarkening, and the light areas need lightening up a bit again. With pastels though, luckily you can keep adjusting the values until you're happy with the results. One problem that I do tend to have with pastel pencils, and I'm sure other pastel artists can relate, is sharpening them. I have tried multiple ways and I still do struggle with this. Sometimes I use a regular handheld sharpener, like the one that came in the set of the Stabilo pastel pencils, which works well for the Stabilos, but it doesn't work well with the Faber-Castell pit pastels because the Faber-Castell ones have a sort of like a plasticky layer over the edge of the pencil 
So when you try and sharpen it, it just feels quite stiff and it doesn't glide nicely in the sharpener, if you know what I mean. I sometimes use my Derwent Superpoint Mini, which is a sharpener that has sort of a handle that you twist round, which sharpens the pencil. But most of the time, this just causes the pastel pencils to snap and then it wastes a lot of the pastel. Most of the time I use a craft knife, but I do struggle to get a sharp point using this method. If any of you have any tips for sharpening pastel pencils, please leave your suggestions in the comments below as I'm still looking for a good way to sharpen my pastel pencils. In the bottom half of the nose, there are quite a few wrinkles and grooves. So I started off this section by marking out the darkest grooves using a dark brown pastel pencil. I'll blend these lines out a bit later so that they aren't quite as harsh. I then fill in the bottom half of the nose with a light brown pastel and then blend it all out using the blending stump. In the bottom half of the nose there are also a few blue and purple tones in my reference photo, so I subtly added those in as well. I do really blend the colours out though really well so that it doesn't look weird, but these subtle added colours can make a piece look more interesting. For example, when I draw black fur I often add in a lot of blue tones, tones as black fur isn't just black. When the light reflects off the fur, it reflects colours from the surroundings too. When these subtle details are added into, into your drawings, it can add some interest and prevents the drawing from looking too flat. In the brown areas of the bottom half of the nose, um, the pink of the tip of the nose sort of blends down into the brown, sort of like a subtle ombre. So I added some pink in between the grooves in the bottom half of the nose. This adds a bit more dimension and makes it actually look like the grooves are sunk in more than the rest of the nose, so like bits of the nose are actually raised, which creates some texture. For the lightest highlights on the nose, I start off by using a white pastel pencil and create some dots in those areas. With pastels, I usually add in the brightest highlights nearer the end, as luckily you can add light colours on top of dark, unlike with coloured pencils. The white pastel pencil that I find to layer over dark colours the best are the whites in the Caran d'Ache pastel pencil set. The Caran d'Ache pastel pencils are a lot softer than the Faber-Castell and the Stabilo ones, so once lots of layers of pastel are on the paper, the Caran d'Ache white applies the most opaque out of the other ones. I'm going to speed up the last bit of this video where you can watch me complete the final layer on the nose and you can also see how I create the fur around the nose too. I hope you enjoy!
I don't know about you, but peeling off the tape at the end of doing a drawing is my favourite part as it is super satisfying. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye guys!